How do you manually install mods for Fallout 4? That is the question I'm going to answer in this video. It's all over. Normally, I don't recommend manually installing mods for a game such as Fallout 4 and instead suggest that you use a tool such as Nexus Mod Manager. However, at the time of making this video, Nexus Mod Manager has not been updated to support Fallout 4 and it is actually a fairly good idea for you to understand the manual installation process anyway. This knowledge will help you later on if you continue to mod. Now in this video, I am going to assume that you've set your game up ready to be modded. If you haven't, I did make a video devoted to that showing you how to change the configuration files and I will leave a link right here. You should go off and do exactly what I say in that video. However, if you have done that already, we can get started. The first thing we need to do is find out where we've installed the game. Now, I have my game on a drive called Games, where I've got Steam installed. I have my Steam folder on Games, as you can see, the F drive. For many of you, it will probably by default be installed on your C drive in program files. Um, as a side note, this is something I generally recommend against. You may want to spend a little time transferring your entire Steam folder to either a separate drive if possible, or at least a different folder, perhaps make a games folder on your C drive. This is because there are some security issues with program files and some modding tools later on that you may use could have issues. If you can spend the time, I would recommend doing that. If not, that, that is completely up to you. But you, if you find it under program files, it will still look the same as mine. You will find a Steam folder. Go into Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4. There you go. That is the games folder. You'll know you're in the right place because you will find the Fallout 4 executable and the Fallout 4 launcher executable. Do not worry if you cannot see .exe at the end of these files. Your operating system is just set to hide them from you. That is not a problem. From there, you can see the data folder. This is where the bulk of your modding will occur. This is where the files will get placed. So now we've identified our data folder, we're going to need a mod to actually place in the data folder. And for that, I've chosen Easy Lock Picking, which can be found on the Nexus Mod site. If you've not signed up for Nexus Mods, you should probably do that if you want to follow this tutorial. Don't worry, it is free. You may be prompted for premium membership, but you don't actually have to choose it. You can choose the free option. Uh, so sign up for that and download Easy Lock Picking. Go along to the file section, wait for it to finish, and then download manually. Now I'm gonna download mine to my desktop. You will have to find yours once you've downloaded. And I'm gonna close that, now it's finished. And there you have the downloaded archive file. Now this is a RAR file. You are going to need some program to open this RAR file, either WinRAR or 7-zip, something like that. And the first thing to do is to unpack it. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to extract here. No, actually I'm going to extract to easy lock picking. I'm gonna keep the name, there it is. And I'm gonna open this. And as you can see, it contains a single file, a file that is an ESP file. This is just a plugin. It's probably the simplest of the mods to install. And to install the mod, all you actually need to do is drag it into the data folder. Easylockpicking.esp is now in our Fallout 4 data folder. I can actually close this. I don't need it anymore. The mods plugin is there. However, we do need to check the plugin is selected to be loaded by the game. Now, if I start up Fallout 4, and I recommend you do this actually, start up Fallout 4 so that it opens this launcher. Do not play the game. Uh, once the game officially supports mods and Bethesda release their GEC, there will almost certainly be a data files option here. At the moment, it is closed off. And so we're going to have to check the plugins are selected ourselves. We're gonna to have to do that manually. 
but running the launcher is actually useful at this stage. I'm now going to click exit. Running the launcher after you've installed a mod with a plugin usually will add that plugin to the list of plugins that are going to be loaded by the game. If you set your, your game correctly for modding, as I showed you in the video I mentioned earlier on. But it's always worth checking. And you will find the plugins text in, if I go to computer, your main drive, the C drive, users. For me, Gopher, and then you're going to want to go into App Data. Now, App Data is normally a hidden file. If you can't see App Data, you need to go along to Tools, Folder Options, and under View, make sure Hidden Files and Folders is set to Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives, and then hit Apply. This should show you App Data. You go into App Data, Local, Fallout 4, and you're looking for plugins.txt. Once more, edit this with the text editor of your choice. And as you can see, it's actually added easy lockpicking.esp. It also says, please do not modify this file. However, if this file is missing, you're going to need to make sure you add it. Don't worry, you can modify it. Add easy lockpicking.esp. This tells the game it needs to load this. So add it and save or close it if it was already there. And believe it or not, that mod is now installed. You have easy lockpicking.esp installed. And when you go into the game, this mod should be working just fine. Now, if you get in game and the mod does not seem to be working and you're completely sure that you've added it to the plugins.txt file, it may be that you've not set your ini files up correctly, as I showed in the video I mentioned earlier. Uh, to check that, go along to Documents, My Games, Fallout 4, and edit the Fallout 4 prefs.ini. I'm going to be using Notepad++, but you can use Notepad. Scroll down until you find the section marked Launcher and just make sure you have B Enable File Selection equals 1. Now that process will work for mods that are simple plugins that perhaps come with resources. You'll know if it's a plugin, it will have an ESP file or an ESM file like that, and it might have a BA2 file as well. However, some mods also have folders in them. And if you find a mod with folders, it has what we call loose files. And you're going to copy loose files across the same way as you copy plugins, but unlike plugins, you don't need to activate them in the plugins.txt. And in fact, if the mod is just loose files and no plugin, you don't even need to check the plugins text file. To show you this, I'm going to install a mod called Value Per Weight Indicator for Container UI, which basically adds a small tweak to the user interface that shows you the value to weight ratio of any items you loot. Let's first of all download the mod once more. I'm going to download the latest version, 0.2. Download manually. Again, for me, I'm going to download it to my desktop. This time, it seems to be a zip File, close this, uh, and I can actually just double click this and open it like so. And if I go into data, I will see a folder called interface. This tells me it's a loose file mod. And the, the, the installation is pretty simple. Again, I'm just going to drag the interface folder from this data folder into my data folder. Some mods may come without data folder. If, if you get into the archive and it just has interface, drag interface into the data folder. If it has a folder called data, go in there and then drag it. It's just supposed to mirror what you see in the game's data folder. And then I can actually close this. The required files are now in my game. However, because there were no plugins, you don't need to check the plugins text as you did for the last mod. This mod will work as long as you set your game to enable modding correctly. And there you go. You can see very clearly a value to weight ratio option. 
The mod has been installed and is working just fine. Now if you're having problems with a mod like this, one with loose files, and you're sure you've copied the files across correctly, you may want to check the INI files. Again, go along to Documents, My Games, Fallout 4. This time check fallout4.ini. Again, I'm going to edit with Notepad++. And go down until you find the Archive section and S Resource Data Dears Final. Um, in this particular case, because it was a mod that has uh, files in the interface folder, this is the important thing to be looking for. As you can see, I've got a long string here. Again, if this is not set up this way, please check the video I made regarding setting your game up to be modded. And if you find a mod that has loose files and plugins, just copy all of the files across and make sure the plugin is selected in the plugins.txt file. I couldn't find any mods that were set up like that now, but there will be mods like that sometime soon. There may even be by the time you watch this video. Deleting mods manually is a simple concept, but can be a little bit more complicated in practice. Uh, it is essentially a matter of deleting the files you copied into the data folder. So for example, if I deleted the interface folder that I've just installed, that would delete that mod. The problem is, if I've installed any other mods that use the interface folder, I can't just do the entire folder. I have to go and find the specific, the very specific files that mod installed. The more mods you've got installed, the more complicated it gets. The more you have to do a little research before you delete files, because of course you could break mods. This is the main reason we use mod managers so that we can pretty much forget which files we installed and still delete them, still remove the mod cleanly without any risk or at least with a lot less risk. I should also mention that there are some mods that I have not covered and those are mods that don't get installed in the data folder but get installed in the main game folder where you find the executables. These are mods such as the script extender, SweetFX, the EMB mods, that type of thing. They will be installed here. And I'm not covering them in this video because they, re they really do deserve their own video. And part of the reason for that is A, they do tend to be a little more complicated and B, they almost always need to be manually installed regardless of whether or not there is a mod manager available. So look out for those videos if you're interested in installing that type of mod. However, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you managed to install the mods safely, get them working and enjoy the modded Fallout 4 experience. If I have made a video regarding installing mods using something like Nexus Mod Manager, I will leave a link down below so you can go and check that out and find out how to install more mods in a safer manner. You are more than welcome to join me on that video or any of my other videos and I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember, as always, have fun.